Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're tackling the alarming surge in global obesity. Why people are gaining excess weight younger and faster, how that trend threatens healthcare systems, and what practical steps can restore metabolic balance at the cellular level. Thanks, Ethan. The numbers are stark. By 2050, projections show more than 3.8 billion adults, over half the world's grown-ups, will be overweight or obese. What's especially troubling is how early weight gain now starts, extending a lifetime of exposure to obesity-related diseases such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and certain cancers. The data reveal dramatic acceleration across gender and geography. Between 1990 and 2021, obesity prevalence in men jumped 155%, while women experienced a 105% rise. Historically concentrated in high-income nations, the fastest growth now occurs in Africa and Asia, reshaping an epidemic that no country has yet been able to reverse. Exactly. Sub-Saharan Africa alone is expected to see a 254% increase in overweight and obese adults by 2050, with Nigeria forecast to reach 141 million affected. Some regions of Oceania, North Africa, and the Middle East already report adult obesity rates above 80%, making excess weight the norm rather than the exception. Let's dig into consequences. Beyond appearance, obesity drives metabolic dysfunction. In 2021, it contributed to 3.71 million deaths and 129 million disability-adjusted life years worldwide. If current trends continue, the Lancet projects more than 1.31 billion people will develop diabetes by 2050, compounding strain on public health resources. Cancer risk rises as well. Researchers estimate that by 2070, over 2 million new cancer cases annually about 7% of all diagnoses, will be directly linked to obesity. Excess fat promotes systemic inflammation and hormonal imbalance, setting the stage not only for metabolic disease, but also for malignancies that now appear earlier in life. The economic impact matches the biological toll. In 2019, obesity-related healthcare costs ranged from $3.19 billion in low-income regions to $1.33 trillion in high-income nations. Analysts forecast the global bill will top $4 trillion by 2035, amounting to a 2.9% drag on total world gross domestic product. Childhood figures are equally unsettling. Rising rates among children and adolescents mean prolonged exposure to metabolic stress. Early onset obesity shortens lifespans by elevating the likelihood of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes complications well before middle age. Despite decades of school-based programs, current interventions still miss the underlying biological triggers. That brings us to the failures of existing public health strategies. Calorie counting campaigns and generalized fitness advice have barely dented the curve. What critical root causes have policymakers overlooked and why have well-publicized measures, taxes on sugary drinks or front-of-pack labels, proved insufficient to halt the rise. A major blind spot is ultra-processed food. Multinational companies aggressively market seed oil-laden snacks and sugary beverages, especially to children and low-income communities. Convenience and low cost turn these products into dietary staples. Without firmer regulation of marketing practices, especially toward youth, environmental drivers of obesity will keep overpowering individual effort. Dr. Mercola frames the cellular perspective through what he calls the four E's, four primary energy disruptors that poison mitochondria and block efficient fat burning. Can you outline each disruptor and explain how they converge to create what looks like a willpower problem but is really impaired bioenergetics? Certainly. The four E's are excess linoleic acid from industrial seed oils, estrogen and endocrine disrupting chemicals, electromagnetic fields, and endotoxins produced by pathogenic gut bacteria. These factors synergistically damage mitochondrial membranes, spike oxidative stress, and cripple cellular ATP output. The result is persistent cravings, lowered metabolism, 
and fat storage that resists typical diet and exercise plans. Let's start with seed oils and linoleic acid. Industrial oils, canola, soybean, corn, sunflower, pervade restaurant fare and packaged foods. What practical moves can listeners make right now to slash LA intake and restore healthier fat metabolism? Replace seed oils with stable saturated fats, such as grass-fed butter, ghee, and tallow. Cook at home whenever possible, because most commercial kitchens rely on cheap vegetable oils. Scrutinize ingredient labels. Even organic chips, nut butters, and hummus often hide seed oils. Keep in mind that poultry and pork accumulate LA, so favor ruminant meats like beef and lamb. The second disruptor involves estrogen overload and endocrine disruptors that mimic or amplify hormonal signals. Beyond concerns in women's health, how do these compounds suppress cellular energy, and what steps reduce exposure? Excess estrogen hinders thyroid function and mitochondrial respiration in both sexes. Plastics, personal care products, and even cash register receipts release xenoestrogens. Swap plastic storage for glass, avoid microwaving food in plastic, filter tap water, and minimize synthetic hormone use unless medically essential. Supporting natural progesterone levels can further balance estrogen's metabolic effects. Electromagnetic fields are next. Modern life is saturated with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and near-constant phone proximity. What low-tech habits help shield mitochondria from EMF-induced calcium influx and oxidative stress? Keep phones on airplane mode when not actively needed, especially overnight. Turn off household Wi-Fi while sleeping and favor wired internet connections and corded peripherals. Skip wireless earbuds in favor of wired headphones and set aside daily time outdoors. Walking barefoot on grass or sand dissipates accumulated electrical charge and supports redox balance. The fourth disruptor is endotoxin from an imbalanced gut. Many listeners associate gut health with fiber, but Dr. Mercola advises a phased approach. How should someone with bloating or dysbiosis adjust diet in order to lower bacterial endotoxin and reignite mitochondrial efficiency? Initially reduce fermentable fiber if symptoms are active. That starves harmful bacteria producing endotoxin. Instead, rely on easily digested carbohydrates such as whole fruit and white rice. As comfort improves, reintroduce diverse vegetables, roots, and properly prepared grains to feed beneficial microbes. Their short-chain fatty acids, especially butyrate, tighten gut barrier integrity and unblock energy pathways. To recap, obesity is not a simple matter of personal discipline. It's the product of seed oils flooding cells with linoleic acid, hormone-mimicking chemicals undermining metabolism, ubiquitous EMFs weakening mitochondrial output, and gut-derived endotoxin fueling systemic inflammation. Addressing these drivers transforms weight management from a struggle into a byproduct of restored cellular function. Exactly. Start with one change. Swap out seed oils, filter plastics, reduce nighttime EMF, or simplify your diet for gut repair. Every adjustment lightens the metabolic load on your mitochondria, strengthening their capacity to convert food into clean energy. Over time, cravings diminish, body fat set points drop, and long-term health prospects improve dramatically. That's it for today's episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, here with Alara Sky. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.